Brian Dulesky with Able Distributors. Today I wanted to talk about the Bosch 96% furnace, and it's the new one. It's the one for 454. Now you might be asking yourself, why would a furnace be labeled 454? Because it's got a spot for the sensor built onto the board. So as you know, with the A2L sensors, the cased A-coil, there's going to be a sensor in there from the factory. If you don't pair it with a new 454 Bosch furnace, you're going to have to have an interface board. I'm going to link that video below so you know how to use an interface board because putting that coil on a Lennox, a carrier, a train, a brood, whatever you want to put it on, or an older Bosch could absolutely happen. So that interface board, again, it's in another video. It lets the sensor talk to whatever piece of equipment you're using. This is the new 454 Bosch 96% furnace. A lot of the stuff has not changed. One of the first things I'm going to go over that has not changed is get yourself, we sell the UEI manometer, you're going to want to check gas pressure, both high fire and low fire on this. It's important. A few other things that hasn't changed, the super clear collector box. I like it a lot. It lets you know if there's water or debris backing up in there. It's another diagnostic tool in my mind. Another thing that hasn't changed is you want this thing tilted forward a little bit to let that condensate leave the furnace. It's our number one problem with a condensing furnace is getting rid of the condensate. The pieces for intake and exhaust already built in for an upflow, already here, perfect, nothing changed there. This is a three position, horizontal right, horizontal left, or upflow, no downflow. Again, the, basically the only thing that's really changed is the adaptation of the sensor into this board. It still comes with the drain hardware and everything you need, the instructions, the manual. One thing that's a little different is, hang on, I'll get it for you. On that board, and we're gonna jump into my office, we're gonna go deeper into this, but on that board, going to the outdoor unit, you're gonna to have to actually clip this onto the board and that way you got your connections going to the outdoor unit. And again, on this board, you're gonna have a sensor that's gonna plug right there into that white port. It's a CN30, it's labeled, but it's hard to see. That will let this furnace work with the sensor. Now, if you're not putting this with a coil with a sensor, and you're not gonna plug anything in that, there is a dip switch to shut that receptacle off so the furnace knows not to be looking for a sensor. Makes sense. Um, what else? They're still great at putting all the codes, the wiring diagrams, everything inside the board on a sticker, inside the door, I should say, on a sticker. Makes perfect, perfect sense. The only thing that's missing from this sticker are the codes, the flash codes for the L A2L sensor if it does detect refrigerant. So let's jump into my office, dive a little deeper, get an up close picture of this board. And we'll carry on with this conversation. All right, we're back at it. I started with the gas valve. No, it has not changed in this furnace with the 454 changes, but it's important enough I wanted to hit on it again. High, low, that's where you adjust your gas pressure. You take off these two brass screws, there's a little adjustment in there with a flat bladed screwdriver. Your port to put your manometer, and we sell those, is right there. This is the port if you want to check incoming gas pressure. But I'm telling you, every single piece of equipment should have gas pressure checked, both high and low, to make sure it's right. And here's something else that hasn't changed, but I think it's important enough because nobody uses it as a diagnostic tool, and to me it absolutely is. The clear collector box on these, it tells you if you're backing up with water, if you got sludge, debris, anything else going on. And it's so clear, my camera couldn't even focus on it, but you can see the holes from the secondary heat exchanger. So I think that's a diagnostic tool. This is the sticker inside the lower door. Like I keep saying, Bosch is really, really good about putting detailed stickers on the inside of the door. Everything from the wire diagram to the LCD, printout uh, for the display to the LED lights, the codes, everything's on here. They make it really, really nice from setting your blower speed to everything else. I mentioned that now there's a little wiring harness from the board to your outdoor unit. Now you're gonna notice there's five leads on this. 
And you're going to wonder why with a Bosch heat pump, you only need four. Again, they don't know if you're going to use this Bosch furnace with a two-stage AC or somebody else's brand AC. You're just changing out the furnace. So they get you equipped for whatever you might run across. That wiring harness I just showed you plugs in right here. So you can see you got Y2, W, Y, B, and C. And again, if you're doing uh, just a Bosch heat pump, you don't need Y2. You'd cap that off and just use Y to power an outdoor unit. Cap off always what you don't use. Also new to this furnace, the 454 version of the Bosch furnace, is the B terminal. So now you have a place to land that. Before in the older versions, we just had the wire nut from the thermostat to the outdoor unit. So now we've got a nice place for it to land. And again, they don't know the application. So you can time it out. Again, that's in the install video. Or you can go two-stage. If you're going with somebody else's AC, you can go two-stage. Or you're just going to use one for the Bosch situation. Here, you're going to see three banks of dip switches, two banks down here. And this is where you plug in the A2L sensor from the coil. So this is the overall view of the boards that are in the blower compartment of this furnace. You got your low voltage connection, your little spot for your harness for your outdoor unit. These dip switches, these dip switches, checking gas pressure, what to set it at, all that stuff is going to be in an install video coming soon, along with I go through the diagnostic codes so we can kind of roll through them together so we know when it's flashing this or showing this code what it could be and the fastest things to check to kind of save you time. But what this was is an overview of the changes from the 96% gas furnace for 454. And basically the biggest change is that now your sensor plugs into there and now you've got an LED light that's going to flash for that sensor. So stay tuned for the next video on install and setting up all these dip switches and setting up your blower speed. Brian Dulesky, Able Distributors, thanks.